Hi guys, it's Dominika. Welcome to my channel. For those of you who've been watching me for a long time, you remember that a while back, three years ago, I shot this video, how to date a Polish girl. And that became one of my most popular videos. And looking back at it, it was very generic, not very Poland specific advice, most of it. So now, three years later, I've decided to take it down and reshoot it with more, I hope, introspective. And I hope it's gonna be more useful for you than the previous one. And of course, disclaimer, this video is based on generalizations. Okay, there's millions of people in Poland. They're not gonna all be the same. I just try to look at what I like and what my friends like and find things in common. But if you meet a Polish woman, doesn't mean that she's gonna like the things I list in this video, because honestly, she might be totally opposite on all of that. But I still hope this video is going to be useful and I will try to look into some common things that I've noticed among my friends. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I've recently made more of a shift in my content. I want to make more dating advice videos for women. But if you like this one, please let me know now, so I will do more of videos for men as well. And if you want to date a Polish woman, first of all, you should be family-oriented. Polish women, generally speaking, are family-oriented. When I think about it, I don't really know anyone who would not want to have kids from my friends. I think I most definitely want a family and all of my friends want a family. My best friend actually has three children already. So I think it's quite normal for Polish women to want to have family, want to have kids, to nurture. I think it's also maybe a theme for Eastern European women overall. I think here in Denmark, I can tell that girls are pushing it away a little bit more. While in Poland, a lot of my friends were talking since middle school, how much they want to have family and children someday. So it's something definitely we look in men. There's on Tinder so many guys posting pictures of babies and then they write, oh, it's my niece. I don't mean you should do that. I think it's honestly really cringe. I remember, for example, there was one guy I was dating who was an engineer. And one time we were talking and he said like, oh, one day when I have children, probably I will build most toys for them myself. And I was like, oh, he wants to have children, oh. <laughs> so I think it's more about making those subtle comments that you communicate. I don't think when you meet someone for the first time, you should within 10 minutes be like, I really want to have children. Because I think it can be too much and too pushy. But I think if you start dating, making those small comments would be very appropriate. And a few dates in, I think we can have a more conversation about it. We definitely notice those qualities. I remember one time I brought one of my male friends with me to Poland. I was a plus one at my friend's wedding. And it's so tragic for a woman to go alone to the wedding without plus one. So I brought my friend over with me to Poland for to, be, to be my plus one. And we stayed with my family in our house. Uh, and he was playing with my baby brother, who I think was free at the time. And all of my family was so smitten by him. My grandma was coming to me. And Dominica, look how he plays with a, with a baby. And I was like, grandma, he's just my friend, calm down. But we noticed that so much and you shouldn't be faking it, pushing it, talking constantly how you want to have children. I think it's more showing how you would be as a father to a woman, expressing to her how you would be when you have children, what would you do, um, how you imagine parenting to be. I think more making those comments make us put a picture of you as a father, makes us be more serious about you automatically. So I definitely think if you're not a family man, dating a Polish woman might be hard. I mean, you might find one that doesn't want to have children and that's good for you, but I do think it's going to be hard because most of us, I do think, want family eventually. You should also befriend her family and friends. Again, because we're family oriented, we want family oriented men. We meet our family quite frequently, so you should put an effort with our families, also with our friends friends and we will do the same for you but I do think it's very important. I live abroad, I live in Denmark but I still travel quite frequently to visit my family. Most of my Polish friends do so as well and I dated some guys who are really surprised by how often I go to Poland. They were teasing me about it and making fun of me. There was one French man I was dating who was really teasing me about it and it really threw me off so much because I'm going to see my family. They are very important to me. I'm going to be doing that every when I can and honestly flight were cheap and I could work remotely so I was going there every two months for a week because why not um, so it was really throwing me off when the guy I was dating was making comments about it and my best friend here is Polish she has a foreign guy and it's so funny because one time we all went out together and we met another guy who told me oh I used to have a Polish girlfriend and I said oh how, how was it and he told me her family was coming over a lot and then my friend's uh, boyfriend was yeah she goes to see her family a lot so you have to be cool with that 
that because we're going to be see our families a lot and if you're our boyfriend we will expect you to be there as well so we really should make an effort befriending them as our friends because honestly if you don't like them the relationship is not going to work and it's not only how you interact with our family members and friends but also how you treat us in front of them yeah my family really noticed that they would like carrying gestures towards me, if they would put an arm around me, if they would ask me if I need a drink. My family, they are just like freaking eagles <laughs> looking <laughs> at the guy, how he talks to me, how he treats me. And our families and friends don't have mercy. If they don't like you, they're gonna tell us, trust me. If they don't like you, they're not gonna be making excuses, they're not gonna be brushing it off, they will say right away, I don't like him for you. You definitely should make an effort and if you're not cool with them, we're gonna know and it's gonna be an issue. Issue. And we also like a man who values education and career. In Poland, education is very important both for men and women. My family was never behaving basically like it's an option for me not to go. It's always been since I was younger, university, 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 and we were valuing university really a lot. I think maybe it's some of the communism times where it wasn't the same way and having a university degree was what everyone dreamt about, what everyone wanted. So now that it's much more available, if your university education is free in Poland, or if families are really pushing for good education. We also like men who are the same way. We like men who are educated and then who value their careers. Polish women are the same way. When I think about our families, I only you know one or two friends. I think, yeah, I had two friends who had stay-at-home moms. My mom and stepmom always worked and vast majority of my friends' moms always worked. Being a stay-at-home mom is just not really an option for people. I, I don't know. I think when I think about my friends, a lot of us spend so much time with our education education and careers. We want to continue that even when we have children. I think naturally we expect the same in men. And I think also because we're quite family oriented ourselves, I know I will have to take a step back on maternity leave and things like that when I have a child. So I really want to be with a man who can carry our family through, through that. Or even if something happens, it's about security. That even if I was to lose my job, that there is a man that's capable of making our family feel safe and taken care of. Then you have to embrace Polish culture. We love so many things about Poland. Same now in Denmark, we go to my friends to Polish stores, getting Polish ingredients. And then I really like to make Polish food for my international friends or if I'm dating someone. So it's really important for me to have a man that also likes it, who's gonna enjoy Polish food when I make it, who's going to like Polish language because when I have children I'm going to be speaking Polish to them. A lot of my friends said the same. So if you have an issue with Polish language it's gonna be a problem, it's gonna be so unattractive. Or I'm going to Poland quite frequently, I expect you to go with me sometimes, maybe not every time but sometimes. So you genuinely have to enjoy it and embrace it because if you don't I'm going to notice and it's gonna be a very big turn off. I cannot even imagine it because I speak Polish to my children every day and then the guy doesn't and like it it's going to be a very bad relationship and also you should not make jokes about Poland I don't know why a lot of men feels that it's funny to do on a first date I've just talked to my Croatian friend who's been on a date with a Danish guy and she told me he made so many jokes about Eastern Europe how we're coming to steal jobs in Denmark and all of that and I don't know why so many Western men feel that they can say stuff like that to us it's very unattractive it's a very big turn-off I personally can enjoy those jokes if it's my friends. <laughs> if I have some Danish German friends and after a while we grow close friendships and then they make some situational joke, it can give me a very good laugh. But if I meet a man on the first date and he talks badly about Poland, makes jokes, and even with those jokes, you can tell there is some truth to it when they joke about immigrants, Eastern European immigrants being annoying, stealing jobs. You know that there is some sort of frustration in this and that's a very big turn off. Even if you genuinely don't have bad intentions, you just think it's funny. Please don't do that. <laughs> We're not gonna like it. You also should be a gentleman. Poland I think still is quite traditional when it comes to certain aspects. In Poland guys would always open the doors for me. Always. I remember in elementary school when we were waiting in the hallway to enter the classrooms. Always boys automatically assembled in the back of the queue because all of the girls were coming into the classroom first. And it's still a very big part of society. If I go, I don't know, to enter a bank. I don't know why I said bank. I enter any building if there's a man in front of me he's always going to hold the doors for me and I go in 
if, if it's some random man and even if his wife goes first it's also very normal that he opens the door his wife comes in and then he sees me from behind and he waits for me to enter because it's so ingrained in our culture and our behavior i mean in elementary school they're teaching us that uh, i definitely think holding the doors open for a woman is uh, what we're used to i remember when i moved to denmark and i remember that specifically although it was what seven years ago i was entering school and there was a guy in front of me and he opened the doors and walked in and i remember <laughs> the shock that I felt because it just felt so unnatural for me that how come the man didn't wait for me so if you don't do that for a Polish woman I do think she's going to notice that and even now I went on this date with Italian guy two weeks ago stuff like that don't bother me anymore because I'm just so used to men not doing that here but I remember just paying attention I remember when we were walking to the cafe he opened the doors walked in and I went behind him and I just noticed even all those years later, I notice when the guy doesn't open doors for me. And then the whole debate, the issue of who pays on the first date. Ugh, it's still such a tough one, honestly. I understand equality and I understand that men don't want to be used. I fully get it. You don't want to invite a girl to the restaurant, give her a free meal for, I don't know, 30 euros, 40 euros, whatever, and then she will never talk to you again. It can feel like a waste and I fully get that. But I still think that if you go on a date with a woman and you don't pay for her, it kind of shows to me that you don't treat me seriously. I mean, it kind of shows me that you're not interested in pursuing me more seriously. I sort of automatically think, okay, this guy is just looking for something more casual, something not serious. I don't think it's necessarily about paying a lot. You know, if it's a girl that you knew for a while, I don't know, through friends, and then you'll go for a first date, you really want to impress her because you already knew her for a while and you want to make sure she's having a really good time. I think it would be nice maybe to take her for dinner and then for you to pay for it. But if it's a tinder date i don't think that much effort is necessary i think first tinder date is just to see if you're even like each other at all <laughs> because i went on few first dates from tinder where i was with a guy and i felt absolutely nothing just blankness and sitting with that guy for dinner would be a misery so always on the first date i agree with the guys to go for a walk go for a coffee go for a drink something that you can just sit there for an hour and then if it's not going well go away so if you're going for a coffee pay for her cup of coffee or if you're going for a drink pay for the first drink i don't think that sets the intention that you want to pursue her more seriously but i understand that men are scared of being used because there's a lot of men that would use men this way but i think dating is a little bit of a gamble because if the person has good intentions right for you they're going to appreciate those gestures if they are not right for you if they just want to use you they're going to try to use you but that gives you a cue okay that woman is not for me if you plan a really nice date for her if you pay for her dinner and then she doesn't text you you honestly just saved yourself a bunch of time but i can understand fully that can be frustrating um it's just sort of the dating life that then maybe it's about going on less dates but choosing a woman that you really like making sure she has a nice time if you're going on multiple dates with multiple people to me it's more casual mindset so if you're being casual about someone it's obviously you don't have to pay for them i think it's more if you're actually interested really really interested in a woman and really trying to make an impression on her and being a gentleman and that's not maybe so Poland specific anymore but I think being a gentleman is also about paying attention to the woman you're with and if you're on a date together ask her questions about herself when she talks don't interrupt her there's a lot of men who does that that even if they ask me a question I start talking and then the first moment they feel they can connect their own experience experience to what I'm saying they take a chance at it so for example if they ask me a question what's my favorite place I've been to and if I start talking oh actually my favorite country is Italy and then I want to talk more about it I want to say what's my favorite city about the food I like I'm about to say more but when I mention Italy they automatically interrupt and they go oh I've been to Italy last year I really like this and that and that and that I personally hate it so much. That's to me such a non-gentlemanly behavior. I think a gentleman will really want to get to know a woman he's on a date with. He will want to make her feel heard and taken care of and be genuinely interested in her because what's the point 
of asking her a question if you're not genuinely curious about the whole answer that she's going to give you. Or there's a lot of men who go on a date and then they just talk about themselves and they only ask questions. If it's the same question back and forth, if you ask a guy something and then he's asking, oh, what about you? So I genuinely think gentleman behavior is showing interest in your date, genuinely trying to get to know them and listen to them carefully because if you're really into her when she talks, you're going to be mesmerized. <laughs> you're going to be sitting there like, oh my gosh, please tell me more. And uh, that's what we want on a first date, not someone who's just there to vent to us about his accomplishments. And of course, you also should present yourself and talk about yourself. But that again gives you a clue if you're with the right woman, if she will ask you questions as well. Because if she doesn't ask you questions and just talks about herself, then you know she's not interested in you. But this is about what you should be doing and you should be showing interest in her. And it also just popped into my head, make sure she gets home safely. If she lives close by, walk her home. If you're in a city and she's going to catch a bus, tram, metro, whatever, walk her to the station and then afterwards you can text her. I had a really nice time with you. I hope you got home safely. We really like those gestures showing that you care, make sure we are fine. And same if you've been dating for a while and you know she goes out with her friends, tell her, have a great night, but please text me when you get home so I know you got home safely. We really appreciate those gestures. And if you want to get a Polish woman, you should also present yourself well. You should wear nice clothes and put some nice cologne on. And I think especially that's a big advantage for foreign guys over Polish guys. Because when you think about, you know, being a Polish woman, dating a Polish man has a lot of advantages. We speak the same language. We come from the same culture. Our families live in the same country. When we start having family, we'll probably want things to be quite similar. And then when you date a foreign man, there's a lot of possible issues. You come from different backgrounds. Your families are far away. You will speak two different languages to the child. You may sometimes have issues between the two of you because of cultural differences. And I do think that being dressed well is something that foreign men are better with than Polish men. And if you're a foreign man, that's something I think can definitely be your advantage because a lot of Polish men don't really dress that well. I think it's quite common for them to wear tracksuits and sweatpants uh, on the streets and even if they visit your family. And it's not just my opinion. There was a show called Tony and Susanna and they went to different countries and they tried to help people dress better. And I remember when they went to Poland, they all said that Polish women really put effort in and you can tell and men don't. It's also a lot of TikToks like that, that Eastern European women look like princesses and then the guys uh, next to them not so well. So I do think dressing well definitely can uh, be your advantage. And I don't really know much about men fashion. I personally just really like a nice uh, polo sweater and uh, with a nice pants, but I don't like tight jeans, more like straight uh, suede material not suede, okay, straight material pants and then some nice polo sweater. I think that's a very nice look or in the summer to have linen on, but I think on male fashion you should go somewhere else. I'm not really qualified to say, but I can definitely tell if the man is being dressed nicely, if he's not wearing sweatsuits when he goes to the date with me. And same, I like nice cologne. I like if the guy has been taking care of his hair and also his overall appearance. I personally like nicely trimmed beard. Now, not full on beard, but when you have a little bit of hair, I think it's very nice. Um, so definitely putting effort into your appearance is how you can get a Polish woman. You also should be able to engage in discussion. Honestly, in Poland we discuss so much. Every family gathering is all the people discussing about politics and about a lot of social issues and can get sometimes annoying because you're just sitting there for one hour about my family debating about war. <laughs> but we genuinely enjoy that so much. And even with my friends, we often engage in very complex discussions. So definitely being able to do so is going to be a big advantage for you with a Polish woman because you're going to be in many situations with her, with her family and friends when there's a lot of discussions. So being able to hand them properly, not getting upset, not walking away, not bashing people for their views because also Polish people can be more conservative. If you come in and bash people for their views, the vibe is going to be very off. So you should be able to handle those differences in opinions and being um, able to handle discussions with grace. I also think with a Polish woman, you have to be able to set boundaries. We are very opinionated. 
we can be pushy if we want something although we are family oriented and we like children we're not push over and here i want to make sure that you don't uh, get it wrong i don't say that you should be mean to her or aggressive like no 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 no, definitely not i just realized based on the comments and then if my other videos that for some reason some men think that polish women will be very submissive and staying home and having no opinions and that's definitely not how we are i think we present ourselves in a more feminine way i think we dress quite nicely we like to put makeup on and we love to be taken care of we love men who will take care of us but at the same time we have a lot of masculine personality traits i think growing up in poland with our family setup our school system we grow up being very independent and assertive and we like to make decisions i can definitely tell with my friends relationships very often it's my female friends that they're the ones making big decisions in a relationship and men prefer to take a step back and just you know let them do their thing not to get into arguments because we will express our opinion if we don't like something and same looking at my family my grandmas were the one ruling their relationships my grandpas were just sitting over there knowing when to be quiet and same when i look at now my stepmom with my dad that the relationship i think is quite flat overall but if my stepmom says okay we have to go in the garden to do some things in the garden my dad knows he has to go in the garden and work because otherwise it's gonna lead me to an argument because uh, we do expect you to help us with stuff and we have strong personalities so it's not gonna work the way that you're sitting on a couch at home and we're doing everything around you and smile and look pretty we're definitely going to express our opinion so if you're looking for a submissive woman i don't think polish or eastern european women in general are it and i also think that's why when you start dating a polish woman it's important to set those boundaries i think it depends also how you are because if you just want a woman to take the lead and do what she wants to do and you're compliant with that i think it's perfectly fine but i can definitely tell that in some relationships women can overwhelm men so i think that's why if you know there are certain things that you want or something that you want to do i think it's important to set those boundaries if you're single men now when you go i don't know paddle every wednesday with your guy friends it's important that you tell her listen wednesdays i go with my friends we have a night paddling on Thursday we can meet up but Wednesdays are sacred to me that's what I'm doing you have to be able to express those boundaries because if you don't say anything you will plan things for you and then uh, we might be upset that you're not um, matching our vision so it's important that you're honest with her and express your boundaries like your needs and wants because if you don't we will do that for you because <laughs> we're very proactive very proactive approach and the last point of this video is that we love romantic gestures and I think that's maybe more universal to women but we really do so I think maybe not on the first date especially if it's Tinder date but I have one of my Danish friends who told me she went out on a date with a Polish guy and he brought her a bouquet of flowers on the first date and she was so thrown off by it because it's so unnatural here and I think for us in Poland first date especially if it's a Tinder date would be too much but if you're a few dates in I think bringing flowers for a woman is not uncommon i also think if she had a tough day at work and you're meeting afterwards make her a dinner or order in her favorite food we really enjoy those small romantic gestures also we love going on dates even if you're in a relationship you have to dress up for each other make an effort for each other we love date nights so much and if she does dress up for you make sure you compliment her make sure you appreciate the effort that she's putting in for you because i do think we enjoy putting effort in for a man but we need him to show us that he notices we need him to compliment that and that's i think everything for today's video let me know what you think i hope that uh, it gave you some uh, nice advice i hope it was useful and if you liked it please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!